Hey guys, Brian here with Audio Plugin Deals. Hope you guys are staying safe as usual. Quarantine blog coming at you once again. So today I want to talk about a special uh, blog topic. It's going to be the top five orchestral libraries that we have in our shop. These are my top five favorite uh, to use for making orchestral uh, music, whether it be you know ambient and beautiful or something epic. We're going to check it out right now. All right, guys, so let's dive right into the track. I'll tell you the libraries first that I chose to use for this. Uh, some of them are available in like big bundles, but I didn't use everything in, in those large bundles. So I'll tell you the specific libraries here. So I have Emotional Cello, Harmonic Subtones Emotional Cello. I've got Sonoscore's Lyrical Violin Phrases, as well as Sonoscore's Origins. For this one, I, I like all of the Origins ones, but I use the ukulele and muted piano here. Then I have, um, for brass strings and woodwinds, I use Rhapsody Orchestral Colors from Impact Soundworks. I use the unison patches, which have all of the brass, string, or woodwind instruments mapped across the MIDI keyboard. Um, it's, it's good for sketchings. It's a whole ensemble patch. And then I use, uh, again, the Impact Soundworks from the same bundle of Vocalisa, which is a Slavic woman's, women's choir. And then I also have from the Sound Iron Orchestral Bundle, or the Sound Iron Insane Bundle, we have the Venus uh, Women's Choir, as well as Steel Tones, which is this kind of kind of metallic percussion. I have some reverb on there, not just some, but a lot of reverb. And then finally, the Impact Soundworks Furious Staccato Strings. Now... Let's hear what it sounds like and then we'll go in and kind of dissect the song. So there you have it. Very short uh, little cue. How long was it? 50 seconds, under a minute. Um, but again, it uses exclusively those libraries that I showed you. Now, one of them was a phrase library, but the rest I wrote uh, the melodies and everything. So the phrase library I used was Sonoscore's Lyrical Violin Phrases. I know many of you or many people, maybe not of you, but many people in the composer communities frown upon phrase-based libraries, and I understand why. I do get that. But I really love the Sonoscore lyrical series. So they have lyrical violin, uh, lyrical vocal, and then lyrical cello phrases. But it also has a legato instrument in there as well. So if you want to just play a violin legato, you have it in this library. But the phrases are absolutely beautiful. As you can hear what I used here, it's just... I love it. I love the sound of this. It's, it's, you know, it's a natural human performance and it just fits so well and it sounds beautiful. So you have the visual here with the wave file, the waveform, how it's going to look and where it's going to, what the rhythm is kind of going to look like. And then the speed over here, I just slowed it down just a bit so it would kind of match the tempo better. Um, but you have all these different scales, major, minor, and then you can pick the root note down here in the red keys and then lots of different fa phrases mapped across the keys. So you have kind of these whole long phrases that kind of, you know, are extended, and then you also have shorter ones that you can kind of piece together. It's a very, very useful library. I love it. 
Um, same goes with the lyrical cello and the lyrical vocal phrases. I just used the violin here so that I could kind of show off the emotional cello, which has no phrases, and I used it to play a little line that follows the violin. So you have the solo violin followed by the solo cello, perfect duo. Uh, let's hear those together, and we'll see the little um, melody that I wrote in. So you hear that last note, when I have that uh, dynamics, the velocity there, very, very low, you get a portamento. So the emotional cello has a lot of different articulations. Here I'm just using the legato, but you can see all the articulations here. There's a lot of you know customization you can do with this instrument. And I also took the effects here, I changed the timbre to bright. Um, so normally it's it's pretty warm, uh, but I wanted it a bit more bright so it could kind of cut through and match that uh, violin with those very you know high resonances of the violin phrase there. So let's just play this just a little bit um, so you can you know kind of hear how uh, you know versatile this instrument is and all that you can do with it. It's very very good cello. So I could keep playing forever with that one. Just, there's so many articulations, you get so many playing styles. Uh, what I used for that phrase that I wrote in was just delicate. Um, but just you can hear the versatility there and all those different playing styles. Really, really nice sound. Um, let's move on. We got Origins, Sonoscore's Origins. I wanted something to add a driving pulse to this and that's where Origins comes in. It just does, it's very simple. I just held one note and it does this. Now these are actually meant to be arpeggiated, so it'll sound like.
So you get a, you know, a kind of a process sound. Um, you can also turn off those arpeggiators completely and you get just, you know, the default sound of the instrument. You can also turn off the delay and have, you know, kind of a dry sound. But again, that's a combination of a ukulele and a muted piano. All of the Origin series has different instruments, but they all have that same um, idea, the same concept where you hold down notes and you can arpeggiate them. But if you don't like that kind of sequence sound, you can turn off the arpeggiators right there. And let's just really quick check out some of the different um, presets. You could hear that one had kind of, you know, a different feeling to it. It sounded a bit more natural. On um, the other ones had, you know, some filters going on on them. So there you hear with the effects on, with the arpeggiators on, and with them off. So you get, you know, a bit more of a taste of what uh, the instrument can do. Now we'll go on to Rhapsody Orchestral Colors, which I use brass, strings, and woods. And this is very cliche, but I just had a very low note that uh, swelled up. So you can hear the tubas up there, uh, either it's either just basses or cellos and basses down there. Uh, I think cellos and basses, and then woods, just the bassoons there. So let's check this one out real quick. At Rhapsody Orchestral Colors is chords and clusters and effects. Right now I'm just using the you know the sustain patches, but you also have shorts and stuff like that. It's called the the unison patch. So brass unison, strings unison, woodwinds unison. Uh, let's check it out real quick. We've got tuba, trombones, horns, trumpets, all mapped across the keyboard. <laughs>
So then we'll do the same with the strings. Uh, this is not a very large string ensemble. It might even be just, um, you know, solo strings because you can hear. I don't think it's solo, but it's, you know, a very small ensemble compared to something, you know, like a Spitfire traditional symphonic with, you know, 60 string players. You can hear a lot of detail in that. So right now it's just legato, uh, but again, we have the same articulations across the board for the three different, um, you know, the, the ensemble patches for the orchestral colors. Finally, the woodwinds from that. So it's split up into bassoons and high winds as opposed to, you know, bassoons, oboes, clarinets, flutes, um, so which is a bit different. But you have the bassoons down here. And of course, the high winds in the upper registers. So very nice sound for all of those. Now we'll go on to Vocalisa, which is a Slavic woman's choir. This sounds absolutely amazing right here. It's it's not your traditional, you know, orchestral choir. Sounds absolutely amazing, and I've, sometimes it you want something a bit different. The, their voices are more piercing. It sounds almost like a Balkan choir. So you have a phrase builder right here. I just have them saying a ya, but you can select any of the phrases and they'll say them in. Uh, in sequence as you play the notes, but the sound is very, very good. I have a lot of reverb on that, kind of adds to it. I will take that off. 
that's just you know the the room tone that it comes with so it's you know more dry more flexible I love the tone of those singers though um, and to even that out I kind of have something else which is from the sound iron uh, insane bundle which is the Venus choir this is just a legato but again female choir let's check that out more of a traditional classical orchestral sound for this one Again, I'll take the reverb off. I love the sound of the roomy choir. Um, okay, that I don't have any on, but I did turn on the convolution inside of the GUI. I have the epic hall, so it's going to be pretty wet. There it's just, you know, more of the natural room tone. Very, very, very nice slow legato there. Sounds really beautiful. So that's the Venus Choir. I use it just to kind of put on top of that Slavic Choir and add a bit of warmth in that smooth, you know, buttery legato. And finally, um, there's two more. So the Steel Tones from Sound Iron. I, this is a very basic instrument. I just use it to add some percussive ambience to this. So that's pretty much all it does there. Um, just, you know, it adds a little bit in the background. You'll hear it again when I play the track at the end. Um, just, you know, a little bit of texture. This is the ear candy, stuff you really need. Um, you want all layers covered from the bass to the mids to the high and filling out the space of your track. Um, sometimes people lack that. They focus too much on low end and not enough highs and not enough woodwinds and stuff like that. So you really want a nice... Um, even balance between percussion as well as the melodic instruments and putting stuff like this in the back of the room with lots of reverb it just it just brings it out you'll hear it in your headphones it gives it a nice 3d sense of space um, stuff like that finally i have the furious staccato strings what epic kind of orchestral song is complete without you know spiccato staccato strings and this um, is very good for that just this simple rhythm just kind of towards the buildup. So you easily see a tip and a technique I use all the time, which is when the buildup continues to build, uh, re you know, octave those strings up a bit. Bring out more of the violins as the song builds up until the climax. Um, you know, cellos, violas, basses to start, low pulsing, and then as the buildup continues, bring in the violins more and bring up the volume on those because they will cut through the mix more so again let's listen to the whole track using only those libraries I just showed you everything is available in the audio plugin deal shop uh, so we'll listen to it as it's playing out remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications if you want to support us please leave a comment like the video share it whatever you want to do uh, we love to hear from you guys so until next time this is Brian with audio plugin deals go check these out in the shop